When people hear proof of work, most people think of Bitcoin, GPUs, and more energy consumption than the whole country of the Netherlands. On the other hand, when people hear about proof of stake, they're either Cardano fans or have been caught up in the recent news about the Ethereum merge. Both proof of work and proof of stake are just two of many consensus mechanisms used to validate and select users to write a new block on the chain. But what exactly are proof of work and proof of stake? In this lesson, we're diving into the world of consensus mechanisms and discussing the differences between the two most popular in the cryptocurrency space right now proof of work and proof of stake. We'll cover consensus mechanisms as well as the pros and cons of each. So let's get started. In a blockchain environment, users are incentivized with rewards to validate transactions and then write them into blocks. But in order to prove that user is honest, legitimate, and has the right to add blocks to the chain, it is selected by what's called consensus mechanism. A consensus mechanism is basically an algorithm or set of rules that decides on the validity of a user's contribution on the blockchain. While there are more than a handful of different types of consensus mechanisms, the two most popular are proof of work and proof of stake. So let's take a look at each one in more detail. Proof of work is the original consensus mechanism first implemented in Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin back in 2009. In proof of work, virtual miners have to race each other to solve complex mathematical problems with the winner given the right to update the blockchain with the latest verified transactions. That miner is then rewarded with a predetermined amount of Bitcoin. Proof of work gets its name from what has to be done to be trusted in the network. The miner must first solve the unique problem and then prove they performed the work. Like any consensus mechanism, proof of work comes with both advantages and disadvantages. On the plus side, proof of work is an incredibly secure way of maintaining a secure and tamper-proof decentralized blockchain. And I'll explain why. In theory, Bitcoin is susceptible to a 51% attack. That is, if someone controls 51% of the network's mining power, they can effectively approve fraudulent transactions or irreparably fork the chain. As time goes on with more and more participants using the blockchain, the computational power needed to control 51% of the network becomes virtually impossible. As with all technology, there's a downside to proof of work. For starters, the work the proof of work miners are required to do is completely arbitrary, as in it's completely useless computations that get progressively harder over time. This has the unfortunate side effect of being incredibly energy intensive. While Bitcoin mining began on GPUs, specialists made ASIC mining rigs eventually became the gold standard. These new machines were extremely power hungry and by 2021, the Bitcoin network was using more than 150 terawatt hours of electricity per year. That's more than the entire country of Norway and 75% of the total world's computer data centers combined. And unfortunately, in the midst of energy saving technologies, proof of work might end up being Bitcoin's undoing. There is some hope though, several papers about a new energy efficient version of proof of work called proof of useful work has been published by the Cardano Foundation. So what about the other type of consensus mechanism? Proof of stake took the problems of proof of work and address them as part of its design. Rather than performing a ton of calculations, a user proves themselves on the network by holding and staking or delegating their crypto balance to a stake pool. This stake pool is kind of shared by everyone where everyone puts in and everyone shares a portion of the rewards when that pool is selected to write a block. So how is the winning pool selected for each block? The network selects a winner based on the amount of crypto each validator has in the pool and the length of time they've had it there, literally rewarding the most invested participants. Everyone delegated to that stake pool receives a reward proportionate to the amount that they've staked. Now, not all proof of stake is the same as holders of Ethereum know all too well. Leading up to and after the merge, when you stake your ETH with a stake pool, you hand custody of your ETH over to the stake pool operator. In an ecosystem like Cardano, staking is liquid, meaning you retain custody of your crypto even if the entire balance is delegated to a pool. On the one hand, you have a blockchain that uses less than 1% of a proof of work system. 
Users can be involved in the ecosystem without spending tens of thousands of dollars on high-end mining equipment. Transactions are fast, generally incur low transaction fees, as well as being more accessible to people with less money. On the other hand, the reward system is so robust and equitable, it can unintentionally promote coin hoarding. Also, as of yet, proof of stake is still in its infancy and hasn't yet proven itself as a contender for the operating system of the world's financial systems. With Ethereum 2.0's complete roadmap being realized, as well as the improvements in Cardano's ecosystem over the next few years, it will be interesting to see how this novel consensus mechanism grows. So that's a wrap on these two consensus mechanisms. Make sure to go back if you've missed any parts. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson. God bless.